Bitcoin store where you can find all like 500,000 electronics products that you can buy Bitcoin uh, and so on. There's uh, healthcare, physicians, but um, it's it's growing, it's growing slowly. Uh, as I say always, and my two articles in the series that I have uh, written so far, I've always finished them by saying that Bitcoin, Bitcoin is growing step by step. So it's 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 a gradual process, uh, but it, it 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 never stops, and it has been accelerating uh, in the last few months, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, specifically three major websites decided to start accepting Bitcoin: uh, Mega, uh, Reddit, and the one I think is most interesting is. Workspace. The thing is that Workspace uh, is a web services provider that serves is the 20th largest website uh, in, the, in, in the internet, and uh, their their argument is really compelling because they say uh, PayPal is blocked in dozens of nations, um, and for that reason, uh, bloggers. Uh, in Kenya or bloggers in Iran uh, don't have access to a publishing platform and um, this is a hindrance to freedom of expression around the world. So uh, by accepting Bitcoin, by workers accepting Bitcoin, it, it makes a really strong case for how uh, a P2P distributed, distributed a uh, monetary system that is not owned or controlled by any power um, really uh, changes, has a really big political effect eventually. And this is like, um, I think that my, my strongest, the strongest argument I see for Bitcoin or for a currency that is at least similar to Bitcoin is that uh, that this uh, the, the the kind of money that we have been using uh, in the modern era is always has always been uh, produced through debt. Uh, it is created by lending uh, money and through the mechanisms of fractional reserve banking. A new money is created. Uh, this is called fiat money, and um, the problem I see with this is that it creates it, it creates a society that basically based on that. In like ultimately, the the root of money is is debt, and debt is backed by buying. So really, I think that's the answer to Krugman. Uh, that um, Bitcoin, what it, what, it, what, it, what, it, what it does is that it, it is not based in value. And uh, when when you try to find the value, where is the value on the one, where is the value of the dollar, where is the value on every, any national currency, is basically on a, on the violence that the state can can uh, exert. Over, over the citizens that choose to not pay their debt. So, so in, in the case of the uh, Bitcoin, you told me that uh, Agoda accepts Bitcoin now. And this is a major site, major portal for reserving hotels. That's not well, a bad idea. This is not, a, this is a, it's not, a, not exactly Agoda, but there are uh, a few uh, there is like a business model that has been uh, applied to different to different uh, categories. So, for example, in hotels, there was a there is a company or a couple of companies, I think. One is called uh, hotelsforfun.com, and they offer you the service of buying your book, your Agora booking, the Agora booking that you choose. Uh, for you, and you pay them in Bitcoin. 
So it's like uh, an intermediary. Uh, and they charge one dollar for that service. So, well, they do, like, it is an intermediary, but like, the, I think that it's, uh, it's, they do so at a very cheap cost. So, uh, I think the... So, Agora, just to, be, to clarify, Agora hasn't uh, decided to accept the police yet. Uh, it's an intermediary. It's working. But, but it is possible to buy to, to buy a booking in anywhere around the world uh, using bitcoins, and there is a, a, actually a company that is similar to Airbnb that is called Nineplats.com that uh, decided very recently to start accepting bitcoins for booking. So you can book an apartment or a private room uh, or a house. Uh, uh, in any major city of the world and pay for this directly in this case it's called mindflat.com would you foresee um, being able to well for one thing bitcoins can be divided up because uh, yes. say one bitcoin is worth uh, three hundred dollars but you want to rent a place for fifty dollars you can divide it uh, you know and how many nights you're going to stay there so that's that's one thing that people should know. It it can be divided. How many decimal places? Eight. Eight decimal places. Okay. Yes. So that means that one bitcoin can be divided in one hundred billion parts. Exactly. Okay. One hundred million parts. So this can be used to, especially in the future, as more and more people and more and more businesses come on board to essentially use Bitcoins in many different places. Uh, yeah. Um, and something that uh, I think it's important to consider is that uh, because of the properties of Bitcoin, uh, all sorts of different things uh, are, are, made, are made possible that were not possible before. And um, there is a sort of uh, different uh, logic. What's, what's kind of exciting about this is, of course, the optimism of uh, not only investment, but of being able to use these for going out to dinner, hotel, maybe even air flight, whatever. And this is a very positive thing. Yes, well, for the currency, there is, there is uh, a, drama, like, a, a dramatic a dramatically large room for growth. Uh, we have to remember that uh, while it's the market value, the market, the total worth of bitcoins right now is uh, around a billion dollars. A billion dollars is a really small figure compared to the whole global trade, and um, and the, the, in the numbers people in the population, the general population, that are even aware of the existence of Bitcoin is a relatively really small scale. So the, the room for growth is just mind-blowing. Um, if, you, if you come to think about how uh, Bitcoin can, can make cheaper uh, international trade, um, and you, you think how, uh, if and when international trade starts to be take, to take place through Bitcoin rather than through other currencies, um, the room for growth uh, there, just there, is uh, on the trillions of dollars uh, a year. So, um, so I think that. Um, for one, the, the, the room for growth in, in, in things that exist already, like in traditional sectors. And beyond that, uh, the room for growth also in, in businesses that are not possible at this point, but that will be made possible by Bitcoin. Um, and as you apply Bitcoin logic, you, start, you can start to transform all sorts of economic practices in society and uh, that, that, that I think will be 
and the other phone uh, wrong for people. Like things that don't really yet exist, that are starting to be um, the, the expressing the, the potential of the different world. Um, one example we could, we could say, an example of this is in, in the field of gambling. Uh, Bitcoin protocol and allows for a fair gambling to be kind of like to be in those terms because uh, you can you can verify that the that the that the like bets that you made are uh, that they are visible in the network. So a new kind of gambling is, is being made possible and uh, like uh, some of the biggest uh, Bitcoin companies right now, uh, at least one, is a gambling, uh, is a gambling site that uses the, the Bitcoin protocol to prove to its user that it's not free. So that's, um, that's an innovation in a, in a sector uh, and in a similar way, many other sectors can start applying Bitcoin logic uh, to what they do, to their markets and to their product, and um, and really see uh, open open up like new possibilities. So I think that that that, that it has a huge room for growth. Yeah, definitely new possibilities. I think everybody can see that. Uh, Nicholas, uh, thanks a lot. It was great talking to you tonight. Thank you, Elaine. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.